uh, in the last class we discussed uh, something about uh, propositional logic minimal feature what are the important features of propositional logic that is what we have discussed. We initiated our discussion with uh, syntax uh, and today we will be talking about uh, syntax in greater detail. Uh, so, propositional lo uh, logic is a study of uh, it is a logic of propositions where propositions are considered to be simple sentences in which you can clearly uh, one can clearly speak them to be either true or false you know. So, they are all considered to be declarative sentences you know. So, these are the de declarative sentences are only sentences which are within our purview you know. So, proposition logic in a in one sense it can be viewed as a language the formal language which which has its own syntax and semantics you know. Just like English language ordinary English language has its own syntax that is alphabets etcetera and all and alphabets combine in certain way and form meaningful words and these words will combine in certain way and form meaningful sentences and all. And then the grammar uh, with the help of grammar will be know will be able to know which sentence is correct and all like a cat is on the mat seems to be a better sentence and all appropriate sentence. Whereas, if you one can talk about mat cat on and all. So, uh, anyone who learns uh, who knows grammar and all they will immediately come to a conclusion that it is not an appropriate sentence and all. Just like that just like in the case of English language in the case of formal languages like uh, the language of propositional logic we have our own syntax and semantics you know. So, uh, in this class I will be focusing on the syntax uh, of propositional logic you know. In the last class we discussed in some detail about the syntax uh, how what we mean by syntax etcetera and all in the last class. So, we will go into the details of uh, what exactly we mean by syntax and uh, how uh, different kinds of formulas are generated uh, with the help of some kind of syntactic rules. You know. So, just like uh, ordinary English language has grammar and all grammar decides which sentence is appropriate meaningfully grammatically correct and grammatically incorrect sentence etcetera and all. In propositional logic we have what we call as well formed formulas and all. So, to start with the language of propositional logic has some kind of alphabets which are considered to be propositional variables which represent some kind of propositions and all. Like for example, if I say it is raining it is simply represented as uh, the basic units that is the preposition. So, that is it can be represented as simple letter R and all. Suppose if you say it is raining or it is not raining then you, re you simply represent it as R R not R and all. So, uh, we have uh, to begin with we have propositional variables we have n number of variables which are available to us to represent all the sentences that are generated in our propositional language. And in addition to that we have five logical connectives they are and R implies negation double implication and in addition to that just like ordinary English language has punctuation marks like full stop comma etcetera and all in the same way uh, in order to read the formulas properly we need to have some kind of punctuation marks. Punctuation marks in the case of proposition logic are parentheses left parentheses right parentheses and sometimes we use even comma or full stop. So, it's all our convenience and all. So, uh, uh, Propositional logic has, uh, I mean, uh, what we, we, we need to talk about when uh, these meaningful strings combine together and form a, a kind of meaningful formula. And all. Not all kinds of strings combine together and form some kind of formula in the propositional logic. So, for that, we need to define what we mean by a well formed formula. And all. For example, if you say in English language, mad, cat, on, and all it is not well formed kind of thing it is at least grammatically incorrect you know. In the same way an analogy in propositional logic is is that if uh, there are many strings in all p q and with logical connectives punctuation marks and all. Suppose if you have uh, a sentence like this uh, which is generated in this way. So, we have propositional variables p q r etcetera and all and then this is the language of propositional logic. And then we have logical connectives uh, R and and implies and if and only if. So, this stands for and this stands for implies. So, material implication 
and then this stands for if and only if which is used for invoking necessary and sufficient conditions and all. In addition to that what we have said is simple that is this is the left parenthesis and this is the right parenthesis and then this is a punctuation mark which sometimes we use it. So, uh, sometimes uh, suppose if you uh, there are many formulas which can be generated from these things and all. So, like for example, if you have if you write like this uh, or implies q etcetera and all. So, this is a string which is generated in the language of propositional logic, but it is not a well formed formula not a well formed formula. So, then what we mean by a well formed formula you now? So, we require a definition for a well formed formula for example, if you write like this P r q implies r. So, this is considered to be a well formed formula whereas, whatever is written above that is k q p implies and r implies q etcetera and all this is as good as mad cat on etcetera and all. So, this is not considered to be a well formed formula whereas, this is considered to be a well formed formula in propositional logic. So, what uh, what is the definition with which we can say that the first one is a well formed formula and the second so not a well formed formula and the second one is a well formed formula and all. So, here is the definition which we have. So, the definition of well formed formula is like this every propositional variable like p's q's r's etcetera and all suppose if you write like this just p's q's r this stands for atomic sentences they are already well formed formulas and all. So, that is the first thing and the second thing is is that if something is a well formed formula let us say p q or anything and the negation of that one is also a well formed formula and all. So, that means uh, suppose if you have this p s q s r s etcetera they are all well formed formulas and all atomic sentences are all automatically well formed formulas. If you put one symbol this is this stands for not and all if you write not p this is a well formed formula and all the same way not q is a well formed formula. And whereas, if you write p and negation this is not a well formed formula and all. So, that is the way we defined it and all according to our definition the only only case in which the negation comes on the left hand side of this uh, propositional variable is considered to be well formed formula. Whereas, if I write like this p followed by that there is a negation then it is not a well formed formula. And all. So, this is all our convenience and all. So, first we need to define what we mean by well formed formulas and all and we stick to the definition and then it makes our life simpler. So, that is why we follow this particular kind of definition and all. So, if something is a well formed formula immediately the negation followed by that is also considered to be a well formed formula and all. And the third thing is is that there are different clauses and all with which you can decide what is considered to be a well formed formula etcetera and all. Just like we have so many grammatical rules to say that uh, I mean which sentence is grammatically correct, which sentence is grammatically incorrect etcetera and all. So, we have very limited rules and all here not like grammatical rules are many and contextual etcetera and all, but here we have only three rules simple rules with which you can say that a particular formula is a well formed formula and all. So, why we are worried about this well formed formulas first you generate the well formed formulas and then you talk about what we mean by this well formed formulas while providing the semantics and all. So, that is what we, we uh, with which we will be occupying our attention in the next class. So, we will focus our attention on the syntax. So, how these strings are generated and out of all the strings which are generated only few strings are considered to be well formed formulas whereas, others are considered to be not well formed formulas and all. So, out of these well formed formulas some of them are valid, some of them are invalid etcetera or sometimes you can even classify it into tautologies, contradictions and contingent well formed formulas and all. So, we will talk about it little bit later, but we focus our attention on this particular kind of definition with which we can know we will be able to know whether a given formula is a well formed formula or not. So, now the third clause is this that since these connectives are binary connectives and or implies if and only if they are all binary connectives that means at least they require two atomic sentences and these two atomic sentences are joined by this binary connectives you know. it is in that sense and or implies if and only if they are considered to be 
uh, binary connective circle. So now the third class says that if A and B are well formed formulas then uh, whatever is written in the brackets A and B and A R B and A implies B and A if and only B are also considered to be well formed formulas and all. So and the fourth class which is not uh, explicitly written here which says that nothing is considered to be a well formed formula which is not formed uh, by using these three clauses and all. So which is already implicit in it but uh, you know if you want to state it explicitly you can state the fourth rule also nothing is a well formed formula which does not follow these three rules and all. So this one is considered to be a, not a well formed formula because it, it does not follow any one of these three rules and all. So whereas this one is considered to be a kind of is a kind of a well formed formula and all. So these are the four clauses which are considered to be important in judging whether or not a given formula uh, is a well formed formula or not. So now once we identify that this is a well formed formula then uh, we can generate a unique tree structure for this well formed formulas and then we say that every well formed formula has this unique tree structure and all. So before that we define this well formed formulas in a, in a kind of formal sense. So uh, it can be read as follows a string a string means any alphabets etc and all that means the propositional variables combined with the help of logical connectives and parentheses and that will constitute a string and all. A string is considered to be a well formed formula exactly when there is a finite sequence let us say a 1 to a n which is considered to be a parsing sequence that means we will be parsing from left to right of course one can pass it from right to left also but we use usually the convention is this that we follow from left to right we go from left to right. So you have a sequence a 1 a, a n etc and all it is like a formula in which the first letter a 1 may be uh, taking care of p or maybe a n is considered to be q or something like that in between there are some logical connectives. And all. So it is such that the nth, nth letter that is a n is nothing but a only. So that is uh, considered to be you know we said in the beginning that every propositional variable p is a well formed formula and all. If the nth variable is itself is a only that means it is an atomic sentence p only. So that is considered to be obviously well formed formula and all. We are exactly saying the same thing with the help of some kind of formal definition and all. So if a n is equal to a and for each one uh, less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. So this particular kind of a i which is uh, that has to be a propositional variable like uh, simple p q r etc and all first one and the second one is, is that for some j less than i if this a i is equal to a j. Uh, that has to be the case or in the third case if j and k less than i then that particular a i has to be a combination of these two things and all a j and a k and all and this uh, star indicates any logical connective uh, apart from the negation and all it can be or it can be and it can be implies it can be if and only if and all we are just exactly stating the same thing as we have done earlier and all. So you know the first one takes care of uh, uh, the first condition takes care of the first one which we have defined in the well formed formula that is every proportional variable p is a well formed formula. The second one is taken care by the second condition here that is j less than i a i is equal to a j and the third one is taken care by the third condition and all. So that is what it essentially says. So now so this is the we can recursively use this particular kind of definition of well formed formula in this we have three clauses and all one is the base clause which says that any statement constant or a propositional variable is a well formed formula which is our the first condition uh, second one is recursive clause that is if p and q are well formed formulas the following things are also considered to be well formed formulas p or q anything which is which joins these uh, things any binary connective which joins this propositional variables and all is also considered to be a well formed formula and all. Of course brackets are not there here we can insert it appropriately and all. 
to for uh, to read the formulas in a better way we need to know parenthesis and all, which we will come to it a little bit later. So, now the closer clause is is that uh, nothing will count as a well formed formula unless and until, until it is constructed according to clauses 1, 2 and all of course, 3 clauses are there earlier, but we have only 2 clauses here because negation is also incorporated in the second one. So, these are the 3 clauses which are important to judge whether a given formula is considered to be a well formed formula or not. So, this definition is considered to be a recursive definition we can repetitively use these things for n number of variables and all and it is a generative definition because it tells us exactly how to generate instances of things that we are trying to define. Now. So, this is considered to be a recursive definition of well form formula and all. So, now so we identified what we mean by a well form formula just like cat is on the mat seems to be meaning grammatically correct sentence whereas mad cat on does not seem to be appropriate for us anyone who knows the minimal grammar rules they will immediately come to the conclusion that it is not a uh, grammatically correct sentence and all. So, in the same way in the case of propositional logic it is a formal language in this language it has its own syntax in which we came uh, with a definition with which we will come to know whether a given formula we came to know whether it is a well formed formula or not. So, now coming back to this uh, readability question and all. So, there will be some kind of uh, confusion uh, to read this propositional logical formulas and all. For example, if we have um, P implies Q R R. So, how to read this particular kind of formula? It can be read in two different ways and all. First P implies Q R R it can be read in this way or there will be obviously a confusion and all if there is no parenthesis which is given here then it can be written as P and Q and then followed by that there is a uh, letter R and all. So, these are the two versions which are possible for this thing two ways one can read the same formula and all. So, that adds us uh, to some kind of it gives us some kind of confusion some kind of confusion arises in the process of reading this formula and all. So, in order to avoid this particular kind of confusion, so what we will be doing is we follow some kind of convention. Again uh, this convention is uh, comes out of practice and all uh, uh, logicians uh, in, the many, in many textbooks follows this particular kind of convention. Now. The first convention is, is that you read formulas from left to right and all. So, we do not write uh, we do not read formulas from right to left and all of course, one can do it, but your uh, definition of well formed formula and all other things changes and all, but our convention is is like just like convention that you will be following uh, left hand side traffic and all. So, like that you know we will be following meticulously religiously we will following we will be following some kind of conventions and all, although logic is considered to be rigorous and all it is also binded by some kind of conventions and all like this. It is only it makes our life simpler and all otherwise there is lot of difference between P implies Q R R and P implies Q R R and all these two are two totally different sentences and all they mean two different things and all. But in the case of syntax how do we know that these two formulas are uh, syntactically different and all semantically we know that it is uh, they are different and all they mean different things and all. So, it is P if Q R R is the case is the first one the second one P if then Q or there is another condition like R and all they are totally two different things and all. How do we know that these two are different formulas and all although it is generated from the same kind of formula and all. So, logicians have come up with uh, some kind of uh, tree structures for these particular kind of formulas and then they use the definition of well formed formulas that means the clauses that we have discussed earlier in making it uh, in making these formulas distinct and all. For example, if we have the first formula P implies Q R R. So, in this one uh, the first first thing that we will be using is this one uh, P and Q R R. So, how did we get this one? Suppose, if P Q are well formed formulas P implies Q is also well formed formula that is what we have said it in 
I think in clause 3. So, this is the one which we have discussed in the last slide. So, we will be drawing three structures for these formulas till such uh, till to such an extent where you will end up with only atomic sentences at the uh, end point and all. So, since this is a complex sentence and all it further reduces to Q and R. So, this is the tree structure which is generated for this formula 1. Now the tree structure for this second formula is like this. Now this formula says that first we have P and then this is joined uh, this is combined with Q R R and all. So, first P Q R R and then Q R R again now we need to state these rules and all clause. So, this is clause 3 clause 3 is is that uh, P and Q uh, if P is a well formed formula Q R R is a well formed formula then P implies Q R R is also well formed formula. So, Q R R again we apply clause 3 and then we can say that Q has to be well formed formula and R has to be well formed formula you know? this is the T structure of this one. So, now at the end point we have only atomic variables and all. So, now coming back to this particular kind of thing P implies Q R R this is the second formula. So, what I am trying to say simply is this that every well formed formula has its unique tree structure and all. no two formulas have the same kind of uh, tree structure and all. So, unless until they are logically identical and all suppose if you write the same thing uh, I will I'll state about those things little bit later. So, now this is another kind of well formed formula uh, this can be read in this way first one we have drawn tree structure for this one. And the second one is like this. So, now you apply the same definition of well formed formula then it reduces to this one this is again clause 3. So, now this can be further reduced to P and Q. So, now if you see the structure of three, three diagrams for this particular kind of thing then uh, these two are totally different and all on the left hand side you have only one atomic variable here you have two atomic variables here and you have two atomic variables here in the right hand side, but you have only one here these two are totally different uh, these two have different structures and all. So, that makes this uh, 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 formulas P implies Q or R is totally different from P implies Q or R. So, you have to note that we did not invoke any meaning or anything for these formulas and all you have just drawn tree structures according to the definition of well formed formulas and then we have stated that the first one is having a different tree structure compared to the second one and all that makes these two formulas distinct to each other. So, uh, in this way we can distinguish uh, these formulas to be different and all syntactically it's because they have uh, we have we, we came uh, we, we have we come up with a preposition presupposition that every tree uh, every formula every well formed formula has a unique tree structure and all. So, this formula has a unique tree structure like this and this formula has a unique tree structure like this. So, with this uh, you can even uh, know how to read this formula and all. first you will read this one P implies Q then R then this P and Q are read and all. So, uh, there is another way of uh, with this tree structure you can also come to know how to read this particular kind of formula and all. So, now so this is the confusion that uh, arises in all suppose if you write a formula P implies Q or R then it leads to two different versions and all. So, how to avoid this particular kind of confusion and all. So, here is the convention that we follow and uh, what comes to our rescue is uh, how to use this parenthesis and all. So, these are some of the standard rules which you will find it in the standard textbooks and all in logic of course, one can come up with uh, uh, one's own kind of uh, rules and all, but you have to be uh, it has to be uniform throughout the thing and all. So, the standard rules are like this when uh, when it comes to identifying suppose if uh, nothing is given and all suppose a formula is there like this. 
So, uh, in the textbook or somebody gives you a formula like this. So, how to put parentheses and all so that you, you avoid this particular kind of confusion and all. So, now here are the here are some of the rules that we follow. So, apply the connectives and inserting the parentheses if needed in the following preferential order. So, we have said that there are 5 logical connectives and all and R implies if and only if negation etcetera and all. And now among this 5 logical connectives preference should be given in the following order and all. The first preference should be given to negation and the second one uh, it applies to the shortest preposition to its right and whatever preposition which is immediately following the negation uh, within which there it has a scope and all and end connective applies to the shortest preposition on each side of it because it is a binary connective because it connects both the things you know or applies to the shortest preposition again on the each side of it in the same way implies double implies etcetera they are all binary connectives because of the binary binary connectiveness. So, uh, by uh, it is because it is binary connective. So, it connects the immediate sentences on the left hand right hand side of the uh, right hand side of it. So, if at any time you are uh, with repeats of the same connective and all group them and you work them from left to right and all if we follow some kind particular kind of convention and we group them in certain way and all like in this example A or B or C the repetition of R connective here and we move from left to right and all and you put brackets appropriately and all. So, we will try to see some examples and all and we will apply this particular kind of thing this is the most important thing otherwise there will be confusions like uh, this one it should be it will be read as P implies Q or R or it can be even read as P implies Q or R. So, we need to follow some particular kind of convention and then first we will talk about this simple example and then we will move on to the complex examples. So, what is that we are trying to say first preference should be given to negation and then conjunction disjunction implication and if and only if and all. So, now we have to apply this particular kind of thing since negation does not appear here. So, we need not have to worry much about it. So, now the next connective next preference should be given to and that is also not there. So, you do not have to worry about it and we will take some examples which involve these things also. Now, the next immediate preference should be given to the R connective and all. So, now what we need to do is uh, what we have said here this is R connective combines the shortest preposition on the left hand side of it. So, that is Q is the shortest kind of preposition which is on the left hand side and R is the preposition which is the shortest kind of preposition which is on the right hand side of it. So, we will put bracket like this. So, now this is taken care of. So, now the next in the order we have implies and all. So, now we need to put another bracket and all. So, P implies Q R R. So, now we need to put brackets for P and the whole formula and all. So, in order to distinguish it we use uh, even you can use square brackets also to separate it and all. Otherwise, you know it is uh, it becomes impossible for us to read the things and all. So, we can one can use even square brackets or maybe some other thing as well. So, now the whole thing now implication should be given priority and all. So, now this is going to be the correct parenthesis of this one. So, uh, one need not have to uh, sometimes one can omit this para, uh, parenthesis as well. So, even if you omit this particular kind of thing and all it does not make a big difference and all because you can read the same thing it, it means P implies Q or R. So, that is what we mean by the formula which we have written before. So, uh, there is another way in which uh, it tells us and all. So, in a given well formed formula the last preference that we have given is if and only if and all. So, whenever you have this particular kind of connective that particular kind of connective which comes at the end is going to be the main logical connective. And all. So, it will be definitely useful especially when you are evaluating a given well formed formula to be true or false tautology or contradiction etcetera using truth table and all one needs to know what we mean by a main uh, what do you mean by the main logical connective and all. 
usually the main logical connective here is this one. So, this connects the whole formula and all the main logical connective means it is the connective which combines the maximum number of propositional variables in all. So, now here here is a formula which connects only two variables in all Q and R. So, this is a sub formula. So, this is considered to be a major major connective and all because it connects 1 P Q and R also. So, three variables it is connecting in all. So, that is why it is considered to be the major connective and all. So, this is a simple example in which uh, you put parenthesis in all. So, now one can talk about some kind of complex example in which it has all these connectives and all. So, just I am writing whatever comes to my mind and all then we will see what we mean by Uh, P and Q R R etc. So, here is a formula well formed formula like this. Suppose if the parenthesis is not there and all it can be read in thousand maybe 4 or 5 different ways etc. and all ultimately you may not reach any consensus to what we mean by this particular formula and all. So, this convention is very important to judge whether uh, how to read this particular kind of formula and all. So, now we apply this kind of preferential kind of ordering and then the first preference should be given to negation and all. So, in the first step what we do is this one. So, there is no negation here. So, this is the one which we have. So, negation of P n. So, the first one is taken care of this is the first step. So, now in the second step the preference should be given to n connective. So, now in the case of this one what you need to do is you have to follow some kind of convention and all either you move from left to right or you move from right to left and all usual convention is, is that you move from this to that. Then you come across conjunction here and here also repetitively you are using this particular kind of thing and all. So, two times you will find this conjunction and all that means you need to move from left to right and all. So, now in this case uh, we are applying this preferential order for conjunction and all. So, it will be like this. So, conjunction rule is this that I mean the shortest preposition on the left hand side and the shortest prepositional variable on the right hand side right connects this one. So, you need to put parenthesis like this and then this is as it is. Now, again uh, you need to put this particular kind of thing you know. So, the shortest preposition uh, which connects this conjunction is P and the left hand right hand side it is Q and all now it is R. So, this is step number 2. So, now step number 3. So, now we have given preference to and and all we have taken care of and. So, now coming back to R and all the next preference should be given to R. So, I will use a different color chalk piece and all. So, that you know it will come to know how to write this particular kind of thing. So, now here you do not have any R and all. So, now the only R connective this is the R connective you know. So, now this has to be bracketed and all. The immediate preposition which connects these two things on the right hand side we have R the shortest kind of preposition formula which is on the left hand side of this particular kind of connective is P and Q. You should not take all the preposition into consideration, but this is the considered to be this is considered to be the shortest kind of preposition and all. So, now you put brackets like this. So, now there is no R here. So, now you have taken care of this one. So, now coming back to implication and all. So, now again you apply the same rule and all, then you say that whatever connects this one on the left hand side the shortest preposition is this only negation of P on the right hand side you have P and Q. So, now you put a connective like this. So, now implication is taken care of. So, now till it is not at over and all. So, now there is one more connective that is implication double implication and all which stands for if and only if. So, now the shortest preposition on the left hand side is the whole thing and all and the shortest preposition on the right hand side is the whole thing P and Q and R because it is already a kind of complex preposition and all. 
So now the whole uh, the parenthesis now becomes like this. So now this is the final kind of thing and all. So it should be read as not P implies P and Q if and only if P and Q or R is the case now. So in this way we can decide uh, so what we how to read this particular kind of formula now. If you do not have this convention and all there are many ways which you can read this formula and all. For example not P implies P and Q implies P and divide and then Q or R that is one way of reading it or you can read it in this way not P implies P and Q if and only if P and Q or R that is one way of reading this there are several ways which you can read it and all. In order to avoid the uh, confusion and all we follow parenthesis and all like this. So now once you have done this particular kind of thing uh, so now we can safely omit some of the parenthesis and all because excessive information also causes some kind of uh, unnecessary occupation of information and all in computer science language they are all characters and all if unnecessarily you put so many brackets and all like for example P implies Q you put it in several brackets like this it is a waste of energy and all although it is uh, considered to be same and all three brackets here of course four one two three four etc. So left and right brackets uh, parenthesis matches and all. You can write P implies Q like this and all you can omit all these brackets and simply say that P implies Q itself. So it saves our uh, in, uh, space and all so, so in this way the main logical connective here is this one if and only if and all. So although we give least, least preference to this particular kind of thing but this is going to decide whether this formula is going to be true or not we will talk about it a little bit later. This is also considered to be the major logical connective in the sense that it connects maximum number of propositional formulas and all. So now in this case uh, you can omit parenthesis in this way not P you do not require uh, any kind of brackets here now you can even omit this particular kind of thing also. So now you can write P and Q and put one bracket here implies P and Q R R and this this whole bracket need not have to be put in all you can remove this particular bracket and you can simply read in this particular kind of thing and all. So these brackets should match and all otherwise uh, uh, computer will show some kind of syntactical error and all. So now what we discussed so far is simply like this that uh, we can generate n number of meaningful uh, n number of strings and all but not all strings are considered to be well formed formulas that is the first thing and the second thing that we have discussed in detail with some examples is this that when the parentheses are not given how to decide. Uh, how to read a particular kind of well formed formula and all it leads often leads to confusion and all but if you follow this particular kind of convention then it will simplify our uh, thing and all this is one way of reading this particular kind of thing and all. So usually in, in good standard textbooks and all uh, this convention is already given and all usually parenthesis is already given and all if you do not give it and all then if I follow some convention I read read this formula in this way. So what happens if someone come someone follows a different kind of convention and all like uh, they reverse the same thing for example first preference they will give it to if and only if then implies R and and double negation now it might lead to some other kind of formula and all. So that is the reason why it is always uh, good to state uh, it is important to state this parenthesis appropriately and all otherwise there is be confusion of reading this particular kind of formula and all. So when there are groups of uh, connectives like this which you find it then you, there is a way again the convention is this that you move from left to right and all. So these are all conventions only but one can follow one's own convention to find out what we mean by a given formula not what we mean by uh, what exactly uh, how this uh, formula is well formed and all. So these are some of the things which we have discussed in greater detail already and the convention here is this that we can omit the use of parenthesis by assigning some kind of decreasing ranks to the propositional connectives as follows. So if you find uh, if and only if we can safely omit the 
parenthesis and all like the one which we have done there. And next immediate thing is this particular kind of thing and all in this case also P implies Q or R you can put one bracket here, but you can omit this particular kind of parenthesis and all you can just simply state P implies Q or R it can be simply read in this sense. And the next in the decreasing order of rank it is P and Q and then next one is R and negation and all. So the connectivity with greater rank always reaches further and all greater rank in a sense that if and only if so it reaches further and all it connects as many sentences as possible and all propositional formulas as possible. So in the examples that are there here in the slide for example if you have a sentence like P implies Q and R R S, yes, this can be uh, written in this particular kind of thing I will just uh, uh, write it and then we will come to know P implies Q uh, P implies Q and and R R S. Yes. suppose if you have a, a formula like this. So now again uh, what we have done is we have to follow this particular kind of order implies and if and only. So the first thing which we need to take care of is connective and and all. So you put bracket like this and then followed by that uh, you need to give importance to this particular kind of connective and then you put bracket like this in the second step. So this is taken care of or and now what me what is left is P implication and all. So now this should be taken care of. So this is considered to be the formula in this way P implies Q and R or S and all. So now even if you omit this parenthesis and all this one is not going to make make it different and all it is same as this one P implies Q and R or S and all. So in this way you can omit the paragraph parenthesis and all in order to save some kind of space and all. So likewise you can draw tree structures and you can say that these two formulas are different and all. So use we need to use some kind of conventions to eliminate as many parentheses as possible and all the convention that we have mentioned earlier unnecessary if you put too many brackets and all it is it will occupy unnecessary space and all. So better to omit this parenthesis by using that decreasing rank kind of thing and all. So now there are some definitions which we need to note. So what we have discussed so far is what we mean by well-formed formula, how to form a well-formed formula. There are some rules for it, and then how to read a well-formed formula and all. So now there are some kind of definitions which we need to note. Uh, usually P's, Q's, R's, etc. are considered to be atomic uh, propositions. Uh, when they combine with some kind of logical connectives, they form compound sentences and all. That means a sentence is considered to be compound if it logically contains another complete sentence as a component and all like P R Q and all it consists of another sentence Q and all. So when these two sentences combine together it will form some kind of compound sentence and all it is like atoms combined together will form molecules molecules combined together will form compounds etc. And all. So like this in analogy you can have it here in the case of propositional logic. We have, we have started with basic units that is atomic sentences which stands for P's, Q's, R's etc. and then they combine with some kind of logical connectives and then form compound sentences and all. A sentence is which, which is considered to be simple if it is not compound and all like you know P's, Q's, R's etc. and all they are all simple sentences and all. So one sentence is a component of another sentence if and only if whenever the first sentence is replaced by another declarative sentence the result is still considered to be a grammatical sentence and all. For example what it essentially says is this particular kind of thing and all. Suppose if you have a compound sentence like this P and Q. So now you replace Q with P and P with Q and all. So this will become Q and P and all. So these two are logically identical to each other which we will talk about a little bit later. Well the structure of this two sentences are same and all. So it has the same tree structure and all like this P and Q and all. So we will talk about a little bit later but what I am trying to say is this that. So 
so if you replace p by q and q by p and all and it will become q and p if you use commutativity property p and q is same as q and p this may not be same uh, uh, this may not be uh, may not apply to day to day discourse and all one simple example could be like this that uh, usually you know you when you become sick you will go to the doctor and all so this sentence can be uh, put in this way in a complex compound sentence like this I became sick and I went to the doctor that is P and Q if you say the same thing Q and P uh, I went to the doctor and I became sick and all nobody goes to the doctor to become sick and all so these two sentences we mean two different things and all in day to day discourse but in the case of propositional logic they mean the same because P and Q is same as Q and P they have same similar tree structure and all they are identical to each other. So it is in that sense uh, 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 they are logically identical to each other. So a sentential operator is an expression containing some kind of uh, blanks such that uh, when these blanks are filled with complete sentences the result is also considered to be a kind of uh, sentence and a complete sentence and all. So now what we mean by a major main logical connective and all which we have defined already in one of the examples the main logical operator in the compound statement compound statement in the sense that it's, it can be P implies Q or P or Q or it can be a, a mixture of all these things you know, a big compound kind of sentence which is generated by R and implies etc and all is the one that governs the largest component or components of a compound statement and all a, a minor logical operator governs only smaller components and all. For example, if you have uh, in this particular kind of formula which is already there here in this one. So the major logical connective now we are trying to find out what is the major connective here and minor connectives. First of all what are the connectives? Connectives are these things negation R and implies so this stands for not of course I will talk about this thing when we talk about semantics in greater detail but in this moment even if you know this particular kind of thing it is enough and all and implies and if and only if which is used to invoke necessary and sufficient condition or equivalence relation. So the major logical connective is the one which connects as many propositional variables as possible and all. So now in this one so this is the this is considered to be the major logical connective because it connects uh, not P, 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 Q and on the other hand P, Q and R at least three connectives on the left hand side and the right hand side and two connectives on the left hand side and all. So it, it connects as many propositional variables as possible and all so that that is the reason why so this is considered to be the major connective and all. So later it will be very useful this concept is very useful in the sense that so what we will be doing is in order to judge whether a given formula is there are three types of sentences which occur in propositional logic tautologies contradictions and contingent states statements and all under this major logical connective if you get all T's etc and all that is considered to be a tautology under this major logical connective whatever connective that is there here it is if and only if under this if you get only false and all if you evaluate the truth value of this particular sentence and under this major logical connective if you get all f's and all it is considered to be a contradiction if you get t's f's etc it is considered to be a contingent sentence and all it is for this reason we need to find out what we mean by what exactly is the major logical connective and all. So now the main minor logical connectives are the ones which connects as many if a few propositional variables as possible and all. So now here this is a major minor logical connective here this is also they are all sub formulas and all whatever connective that occurs or figures out in the sub formulas is considered to be the minor logical connective and all here is the one and here is another one and all all the sub formulas whatever connective is there that is considered to be the minor connective and all. So these are all minor connectors in this particular kind of formula you know it is not you know this is the major minor and all in general but with respect to this particular kind of formula this form this symbol 
if and only if it is considered to be the major logical connective and all other things are minor logical connectives in all. So, exactly the reverse order follows in all here. So, that is whenever you have this particular kind of thing usually that will serve as the major logical connective next possible thing is this one and then and are of same ground and all and then the negation and all. For example, if you have a formula like this P implies Q implies R and all. So, you have something like this. So, now in this one the major logical connective is this one major one and this is the minor kind of connective. So, now the reverse order follows in this particular kind of thing and all. So, now we have identified what we mean by uh, what uh, we mean we have seen what is a major logical connective and minor logical connective this we use it in uh, in the semantics in particular that is evaluating the truth value of some particular kind of sentences in all. So, now uh, coming back to we have defined what we mean by well formed formulas and how these well formed forms are generated and uh, we, we, we came to know how to read these well formed formulas etcetera and all and then we also came up with some kind of convention with which in case you are not given parenthesis and all how to insert these parenthesis etcetera or how to omit these parenthesis unnecessary parenthesis etcetera needs to be omitted to save some kind of information etcetera all these things which we have discussed so far and we also identified what we mean by uh, what is considered to be the major connective and the minor connective and all. So, now we will move on to a different kind of thing which is called as semantics of uh, the propositional logic that means we are trying to define what we mean by uh, these formulas and all. So, it is like the analogy is like this syntax is like uh, producing things uh, in, a, in the case of uh, in the language of uh, mar marketing language we have just you start producing the things and all without knowing the uh, implications etcetera and all just the production is considered to be syntax just like that is what we have done here we have some kind of alphabets we, we, we combine them in certain way and then we are saying that it is a well formed formula and some other strings are not well formed formulas etcetera and all. And in the market language we have distribution so distribution corres corresponds to semantics and all so we need to know uh, how to distribute what you have produced and all. So, for that we need to know what we mean by what you have produced and all. So, that is what is taken care by semantics and all. So, now uh, the connectives that we are uh, talking about there are only 5 connectives not R and uh, implies double implication etcetera and all. So, these connectives are considered to be truth functional connectives and all. So, why they are truth functional connectives it is because of this thing the truth value of a compound statement that they form that means P plus Q or P or Q or P and Q etcetera it can be solely determined by the truth value of its individual components and all. So, uh, this is the main idea proposed by Frege, uh, Frege in particular in this principle of compositional compositionality according to which uh, a compound formula gets its meaning only uh, only if you can evaluate the truth value of its individual constituents and all. If the truth value of a compound sentence is solely determined by the truth value of its constituents then uh, those truth functional connectives are also called as extensional and all. So, uh, this means that there will be a rule telling there will be a rule which tells us exactly what the value of the compound must be for each combination of values for the components and all. So, what all you need is uh, the truth values of the individual constituents and all with which you can judge whether a compound formula which is generated by these atomic propositions with the help of this logical connectives is true or false and all. So, uh, we will postpone this discussion in the next class because we will be dealing with the semantics in greater detail. So, what we discussed in this class is simply like this that you know we, we presented a kind of minimal language for the propositional logic. So, that is a formal kind of language in which it in which it has its own syntax. So, how we generated this syntax because it is we generated syntax in this way we started with the language 
which consists of prepositional variables and then logical connectives and parentheses and these logical connectives and uh, prepositional variables combined in certain way will form some kind of strings, but we said that we have said that not all strings are well formed formulas and all only strings which are generated uh, generated by means of definition of well formed formula is considered to be what we are calling it as well formed formula and all. Once we generated the well formed formulas we have seen uh, that uh, how to read this well formed formulas and all. So, there is a convention which we followed and then we gave some kind of reference to these uh, connectives negation etcetera and all. So, that you know it makes our life simpler and all otherwise there will be confusion of reading the same formula in a different way and all. And other thing which we noted in this class is this that every well formed formula has its own unique structure and all. Suppose if uh, uh, the tree structure of two formulas are same and all that means you are, you are talking about the same formula and all like P and Q and Q and P it has the same tree structure and all in no way different and all. But in day to day discourse we mean totally two different things and all P and Q for example, I went to the doctor and I became sick it's totally different from I became sick and I went to the doctor and all we mean totally different things. And all. In the next class we will go into the details of what we mean by these well formed formulas and all that is taken care by semantics of prepositional logic.